Hi, and welcome back to Mamanomics. Tonight is gumbo night, and I'm gonna show you how to make an easy, painless gumbo in as few steps as possible with as little headache as possible. All right, let's get going. I have here on my lovely cutting board one red bell pepper, a whole bunch of celery, probably four or five stalks, and two white onions that I've chopped up into like, I don't know, half inch dice. Back here in my pot, and I'll show you. I have two tablespoons of unsalted butter, two tablespoons of canola oil, and a quarter cup of white flour uh, that I am gently cooking to make my roux. I melted the butter first, I added the flour, and I'm gently cooking it down so that I can make my roux. And the color that we're going for is the color of peanut butter. And I'm stirring this frequently because it can scorch and burn. I'm gonna bring the camera over here so you can see this. Okay. What I have right now is a blonde roux, and I'll show you the different colors as we go through this process. So what I have right now is the blonde roux. Try to get a decent picture of that. Okay. And I've got the, the roux in a really nice, heavy-bottomed, uh, enameled cast iron pot. Uh, and if you wanted to make this simpler, uh, to do it in a crock pot or um, an instant pot or a pressure cooker, you can't skip this step. This is a really, really important step in the process. And so... I'm just going to keep on stirring and watching, and when I'm done I'll let you know how many minutes I've had this cooking, but it does depend on the hot um, temperature of your burner and the pan that you're using, and the, the number one thing I can tell you is just to stir this constantly. Um, the Cajuns say enough time for you to drink a beer is how long it should take you to make your room. I normally go more by color, um, and what I'm looking for is peanut butter. Now, there's a lot of cookbooks that will say that you need to take your peanut, or your peanut butter, your roux darker. Um, however, when I've tried to take it darker than peanut butter, and once I add the vegetables, the roux keeps cooking, uh, and I burn the roux. And if you burn the roux, forget it. Stop, throw it out, start over. Don't even attempt this with burned roux. But, Nice and slow, and I'm starting to get a little bit of um, a little bit of color to my roux here. You can kind of see how it's a little lighter on the edges and darker in the center. And I kind of scooch the roux toward the center. Be really careful; this stuff will burn the living bejesus out of you. We're starting to get some color. Now it's more of a sesame color. Um, and as I'm just continuing, just you don't have to stir this furiously if you don't want to. And if it's turning color too quickly to suit you, um, by all means, turn the heat down. Um, or if it's not going fast enough, I wouldn't go above a medium heat, particularly um, in an enameled pan like this. It's not good for the pan. Um, you'll also notice that I am using a coated whisk. I love these, they're fantastic. And see, it's, it's darkening by increments, darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. And if it helps you, go get a jar of peanut butter and set it next to the pot so that you have a point of reference. Um, and we're, we're really starting to get there now. So I'm going to set you down for a second and put it on pause. A really good shot. We're getting closer and closer um, so that I can retrieve my beer so that I have it on hand, not to drink, but to pour in once I've finished with uh, making the roux and sauteing the vegetables in the roux. Be right back. Okay, so we are a little bit further down the road with the roux. I'm going to show you again. There's the roux. Here is the color of peanut butter for comparison. I'm getting a lovely, yummy, toasty smell off of it at this point, so I'm going to set the camera down and I'm going to add 
my ingredients, my onions and my celery and my bell pepper now. you while I rip through this pepper. Okay, so I have added two Shalafli Kolsch beers to the pot that had our roux and our vegetables in it. And I'm going to take you and show you that now. And I've got it simmering on low. And I'm also going to add the sausage to the pot. And I'm going to cover it and let it simmer for about an hour, hour and a half. And then we'll add the chicken and the shrimp at the end. Um, if you wanted to do this in a crock pot, this is the step at which you would transfer it to the crock pot. You could let this cool and put it in the crock pot. Once it was cool, put it in the fridge in the morning, get the entire crock out and sit it in the uh, heating element and then let it go for six to eight hours on low or three to four hours on high. Um, again, adding if you're going to add pre-cooked chicken, you're going to want to add that at the end, maybe 30 minutes before, and then the shrimp in the last few minutes. If you're going to add uncooked chicken, go ahead and add it at the beginning. Um, if you're going to do this in a pressure cooker, I would say after this step, which you can do this in an Instant Pot or um, Fago or Lux, um, I would get all the vegetables, all the stuff done on saute, and then add the liquid, and then the sausage, and the uncooked chicken, and then set it on high pressure for maybe 20 minutes. Uh, and then let it naturally um, depressurize. And then once it's depressurized, add in your uh, shrimp just for a few minutes and the residual heat will cook those shrimp in the pot. Um, so I'm gonna let this simmer um, for about an hour, hour and a half, and then I'll come back and show you how I played it and what I served it with, okay? Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes. I'm gonna show you where we are with the gumbo and at this point, I have added the sausage in, which is just normal smoked um, kielbasa, but feel free to add andouille if you like that. Um, I think the longer andouille sits in the broth and the vegetables, the hotter the broth and vegetables get and the drier the andouille gets. So if I were going to add andouille, I would probably add it closer to the end of cooking, uh, maybe with about 30 minutes left to simmer. Um, but for today, I've just used regular old kielbasa, and I'm going to show you what it looks like right now. Okay. So there's the pot. I've cut the kielbasa into coins, and everything is simmering along nicely. And so I'm going to leave it, stir it, put the lid back on, and leave it for another 45 minutes to finish simmering, at which point I will add my shrimp and my chicken, probably the chicken first, and then the shrimp right before I serve. But I'm also going to make um, a little bit of white rice between now and then, and I'll show you how I serve it up and plate it. I'm also going to serve it with uh, some garlic bread, just because that's what my family likes, and that's how we normally get it served to us when we're in New Orleans. Um, as far as the beer choice goes, um, I'm in St. Louis, so I typically use local products, and I like Schlafly's Kolsch or any Budweiser product. Uh, Bud Light, Budweiser, I've used both of those with great success. I wouldn't use anything too hoppy like an IPA. I did not enjoy the hop taste in the gumbo. Uh, however, if you are available or close enough to New Orleans to be able to get a beer, 
Um, my understanding is that that is the traditional beer used in Gumbo in New Orleans. However, I can't get my hands on that here, at least not easily. Uh, so I go with what I, what I can get, and quite frankly, I go with what my husband has in the fridge. Okay, so we're going to simmer for another 45 minutes and come back. Okay, so we're done simmering, and I have added both the shrimp and the chicken to the pot, and it's just finishing heating through. I wanted to show you how I plated the final product. So I have some minute rice that I made in the microwave, and I'm going to kind of adjust the screen so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so. I take a nice shallow pasta dish like this, and I take a ramekin. And I take a little bit of cooking spray. And I spray my ramekin. And then I will take my rice and just spoon it into the ramekin, like this. I'm going to push it down so it's nice and compact. And then I take the bowl and invert it on this, flip it over, and I have a little pile of rice here. And then I will take my ladle And that's the gumbo done. Thanks for watching. Please like us and subscribe to Mamanomics.